now what we have to do is we have to display this data in our application. So what we'll do is once we've got the data, we'll check if the data exists and then we'll set the state accordingly. We'll set the bare data state equal to the data and also we'll set another flag which is bare found and we'll set that to true. We'll declare the bare found property on the state as well and we'll initially set it to false. Also, Axios gives us a catch method in case there's an error. So if there's an error, that means we probably didn't get the bear back. What we'll do is we'll set the bear found state to false. Next, we need to display the bear data in our content over here. So inside content, what we'll do is we'll call a method called render content. This method will check if the data was actually found, if the bear was found, and then show the data accordingly. So we'll say render content. We'll check if this dot state dot bear data is found. Then what you do is you return a particular view. The text saying This dot state dot bear data dot name. Else, just alert saying we are not found. So let's test that out. We search for Corona, and as you can see, we get the name of the bear here. What will be nicer is if we can move this out into another component of its own. So let's do that. Let's copy this, and over here, let's put a component called search body. Let's create the search body file. So inside search, create a new file. Call it search body.js. We'll go into search body, import our boilerplate code, call it search body. And here is where we will place the data. Though we do not have access to the state inside the component, we'll have to use props to get the data. And we have to pass the props from our parent element. So you can say bear data, this dot state dot bear data, and pass it down to the child. And also we have to import search body here at the top. So let's test that out again. And there you can see that the bear is found and the data is shown. But right now there's an error that we'll face. If we search for a bear that does not exist, we should get an error which says bear not found. As you can see, we're not getting that error here. That's because Instead of this dot state dot beer data, we should actually be checking for this dot state dot beer found. Even because even when beer data is an empty object, it passes this as true. And this is what runs instead of this section of the code running. Whereas this dot state dot beer found will return a boolean to us, either a true or a false, and the correct block will run. So let's save this and try this out. So we enter a beer that does not exist. We open up the console. And as you can see, we're getting beer not found. The reason it's printing out multiple times is because the state is being monitored. And every time the state changes, it tries to test this condition. And whenever this condition comes false, this part of the code is run. Now all we need to do is format the data that we're displaying. So come to the search body. Here, let's import certain components from native base. And what we we'll need is a list item along with the content. Then here, what we can do is
and we'll put in a list item inside that. List item has a property of item divider. And we can get rid of this view from here. And along with that, we'll put in another list item. So the item divider will act like a heading. So here on top, let's just add the first one. Let's call that name. And here, I'll just paste this in here. It's basically beardata.name. It'll give us an error right now because we haven't stored the props. Create a variable called beardata and store the props into that. Let's quickly test this out. And there we're getting the name along with the name of the beer. Surprisingly, in the latest version of native paste, there's this bug that's coming in, which is not giving us the correct margin from the left. So there's a quick and dirty fix for that. And that is just wrap this into a list first. And style it with a background color of white. And that's looking nice now. So instead of just entering all the data in, I'm just gonna copy the data in and then walk you through it. So that I pasted in the data. What we'll do is we'll use the default button from native base because we don't want much styling. Sorry, from React Native because we don't want much styling. Let's test that out now. And there you can see we're getting the name, the name of the beer, the category, the description, the rating, which is all just getting the data from the API and extracting it. So on top here, if you have a look, the list item, style equal to flex direction row and justify content space between is basically being used to keep the name of the beer to the left and the favorites button to the right. So there are two views inside. The first one is the name of the beer. The other view is the button. Next, we have the category, which is beerdata.style.category name. Then we have the description, which is beerdata.description. Then we have the rating, which is beerdata.abv. Then we check if the beer is organic or not. So here, as you can see, it's checking if beer data is organic is equal equal to yes. Only then show yes, otherwise say no. And if it, it, it also checks if the beer data description is available, only then show the description, otherwise show no info. Also, what's missing is an image of the beer and this add to favorites function. This add to favorites function is something I'll do in the last part of the series. You guys can also try it out if you guys have an idea of how to do it. Let's just add the image to end this video. So I'll just copy that in. It's a list item of type item divider. The style is flex direction. We've taken it as a row. Justify content is center so that we can center the image that is put inside. For that, we need to also import image into React Native. So let's do that. Once that's imported, we're getting the image from this part of the data of the API. So let's check what that data is. If we go into it, So if you look in here, there under labels, we have icon large and medium. What we're using is large. What you have to keep in mind is when you're using a remote image, it is mandatory for you to set the height and width of the image yourself. So there we have it, a nice and simple app completed in React Native in less than about 40 minutes. Some little changes can be made right now, to make it look a little better and add this favorites button which we'll complete in the last video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe and leave any feedback in the comments. Thank you.